podcast listeners, welcome to What You're Reading, the podcast where I connect with fellow book enthusiasts to chat about our latest reads, the topics that fuel our bookish obsession, and all the things that keep us glued to those pages. In today's episode, I am so honored to sit down and welcome one of my book besties, Brittany. Brittany and I have been reading together for the last few years, but it's really increased over this last year and a half. Honestly, reading with Brittany has been one of the reasons I have increased my reading volume. Today, we're going to sit down and chat about some of the books that we are excited to read during this holiday season and even give you a few winter read suggestions. So let's get into it. Hi, guys. Welcome to the podcast. I am joined by like my book bestie. Like I can officially give her this title of book bestie. We have been has it been two years? I think we have been like reading strong together for the last two years. So when I was thinking about who I needed to bring on this podcast, of course, I had to bring the one and only Brittany Kirkland. And I'm so excited to have you here, Britt. Say hello to everyone. Hi, guys. Happy to be here. You're definitely my book bestie as well. <laughs> Super fun reading we- with you. Yes, we have a lot of fun reading. We pressure each other to read books, um, even when uh, they might be a little bit outside of like our comfort zone. Like, I think, Brittany, I've had you read a few and there is some where I'm like, Brittany, you would love this. And she's like, absolutely not. There's no way. So (laughs) I still try. But (laughs) books that make you cry, I think, are you're like, no, I'm not. Yes. Yeah. That's I can give her a spoiler discussion. Yes. I I, I really yeah. enjoy the spoiler chats on the on the books that make you cry. I'm not about that life. I need it like wrapped up in a tiny little bow, happily ever after, or nonfiction book, but I don't want to ugly yeah, cry when I read. The- sobbing tears. I love those kind of books. But anyway, so we're going to get in to the discussion today. This is going to be like, you are one of my first guests on the podcast. Um, I haven't like officially made the schedule yet, but you definitely are like one of the first guests. So we'll see how this flows. Things may change <laughs> as we get further into the season, but I'm excited. For those who don't know, um, Brittany and I are both in Las Vegas, Nevada, both event planners. Um, Brittany is really really, really like a genius when it comes to trade show, um, convention side, um, especially helping, um, with like food and beverage management and all of that. So she is a rock star. And, um, so not only are we book besties, but like we also work events and stuff from time to time together. And, uh, we also used to have a podcast that we did together called let's talk orange podcast that we had with a few of our other, um, influence and business owner friends. Um, there was a total of six of us. Was that right? I think there were six of us. Um, and it has been on a very long hiatus. We miss it, but, um, yeah, so we're dusting off our mics here to, to get into another episode. So today we're going to be chatting about winter reading and winter books. Um, just to let you know, like right at the beginning here, that's going to be our discussion. But before we get there, we are going to chat a little bit about like our reading life and where we are right now. So Britt, if you don't mind telling everyone, what was the last or one of the last books that you read? Um, I am making my way through the King Master series by Sophie Lark. Um, it is like a mafia romance and it's her second one. So the first one was, um, like mafia romance series of six books and it was the Brutal Birthright series. And then the Kingmaker series is uh, a spinoff with like their children. So I've been burning my way through those. So the last book that I read was The Bully by Sophie Lark, and I am currently reading The Spy by Sophie Lark. I'm listening to those on audio um, because I was just working a a trade show. So I've been like killing it with the audio right now. And when Brittany says killing it, she means killing it. Like you're on, what book is The Bully? Like that is book number what? The Bully was book number three and The Spy is book number four. Okay, so you're currently on book number four. And you started these last week? Yes. Yeah, you're really like flying through them. But that's the one thing about Sophie Lark is her. And I mean, I've only read the one series. I plan on reading this next one. But that Brutal Birthright series, that was so hard to put down. That was my first time reading Mafia Romance. Um, I thought like 
previously like, oh, I'm not going to like this. And, the, you know, the gangbangers and like they're doing like, you know, illegal things. And this isn't I'm, I'm going to hate it. And oh, my God, I ate it up. Yes, it was very dark. And you brought it to me. So like my book bestie, she oh. you always recommend books to me. Um, and you flew through them and killed them. I ate them up as soon as I got them. So it's been yes. it's super fun. Yes. And I just and I can't think stop. it was Yeah, that first one. So for those who aren't familiar with the series, that first one is um it's it's I kind of called it like a Mr. and Mrs. Smith type of situation. Um, it is true enemies to lovers. Like I know a lot of the time in romance, we talk about enemies to lovers and it's like, they had a disagreement in the office a year ago and now they're calling each other enemies or the girl is calling the guy, the enemy. And he's been like secretly in love with her the whole time. Like, and like, that's what enemies to lovers has become. But this was like legit, like somebody tried to kill somebody enemies to lovers they end up and this isn't a spoiler they the the very beginning of the book their parents are are um in two different gangs um one is the irish mafia and one is the italian Italian. mafia Mm -hmm. um and basically they're like we're going to call a truce and we're going to marry off our two we're going to marry off our two old you know kids together and we're going to join the family business and like they hate each other there's some crazy things that happen um and then of course it does end in a happily ever after but yeah that it was like as i was as i was reading i was like this is some mr and mrs smith type stuff like they are legit trying to take each other out it was so good it was so good and it just it stays good consistently throughout the entire both series so i'm enjoying it Oh, I'm so excited to get to that. Okay, well, good. Well, so then that gives us your last read and your current read Mm -hmm. um, that you're working on over there. So one of my last books that I read um, that I really enjoyed, especially because it was during the Halloween season, was My Dear Henry, um, Mm -hmm. which was a Jackal and Hyde remix by um, Kaylin Byron. Um, Such a good book. Um, it had LGBTQ rep in it, and it was just a really fun, fun remix, a way to retell and reimagine the Mr. Jekyll and Hyde story. Um, it was dark. It was really gothic. Um, and it kind of almost gave like some of those fall, like creepy London vibes. Um, and I really liked it. And I think you've read that one too. Yes, it was perfect for Halloween, dear listeners. If you if you really need a good like Halloween fall, it was it was perfect. Like the, their description of like 1930s London with the fog rolling in and the, you know, gothic architecture. Oh, it was it was chef's kiss. I I really really enjoyed that book. Um and then I almost feel like it made more sense um that it was an LGBTQ love story, like there, the storyline made more sense that they that it was a relationship mm-hmm. in there versus the original Doctor Jekyll and Mister Hyde. Um, I had a really good time with that, and then I did, I didn't go back and read the original. We did like the spoiler YouTube of like a um, scene by scene um, mm-hmm. on YouTube, like of the original, so that you can kind of see like exactly what scenes they did so that you have a comparison and that was really fun so I really enjoyed like after reading it then getting nerdy with it and like comparing what the original storyline was versus this remix and it was so fun yes yes Mm -hmm. I agree and thank you for sending that to me and I'll I'll put that link in the show notes for anyone who's interested um and watching it and you're right it really the story just I, again, a, you know, a remix, it's a modern retelling, but the story just made so much more sense when yes. when the two main characters are love interests versus there being a female that, um, that you know, is kind of played into the mix. Because um, I've seen some other um, Mr. Jekyll, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, it, specifically from Once Upon a Time. Um, the TV show from ABC and how they redid that. And same thing. It was like, 
you know, they were both into the female and that's how it happened. But I love how they brought together the characters and, and watching that, like it made so much sense, like some of like the written notes and, you know, this person who ended up, um, you know, dying in it. Um, it just, it, it brought everything together and it just, it made me love it that much more. So highly, highly recommend that one. Um, so that was my last read. My current read that I'm reading now, literally just started this morning, is Blood Debts by Terry J. Benton Walker. Um, and that is like the um, the New Orleans, um, there's two, it follows two magical teens, black teenagers, um, and they're in New Orleans and there's been some kind of um, longstanding history, I guess you could say, with people who have magic against people who don't. Um, and it it has like some racial things in there and it's kind of following their story and what's happening. Um, and the first like chapter and a half that I read this morning, I could already tell like, oh my gosh, I think I'm really, as long as it doesn't get like, like drag out, I think I'm really going to like this book, so... That's my current read. Oh my gosh. I'm excited. You have to let me know how it is. So if I need to read that one as yes. well. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes, yes. Absolutely. I definitely will. So, all right, guys, we're going to move into our main discussion for this podcast episode, and that's going to be finding winter books. Um, and so Brittany and I are going to kind of chat back and forth and give you guys some tips and suggestions and some lots and lots of book ideas. Um, but when I think of it's, I'm trying to separate like fall reading, um, into winter reading. So fall reading is very, you know, fireplace cozy and technically winter doesn't like start till end of December, if I remember correctly, is by the time this episode comes out. So there's going to be some overlap, but when I think winter, I think like very, snowed in type of scenes and settings and descriptions. Yes, still cozy. Um, but really I'm looking for mostly romance probably. Um, and like a cheesy Hallmark movie, dial up the spice a little bit, a lot of it and put it in a book form. Like that's usually what I'm looking for, for winter reads. Yeah. Same here. I want all of the Hallmark vibes all the time. That's all I want during the holidays. Yes. Transport me into your small town or your New York chaotic setting um, where you guys have a very cute little meet cute. And there it is. Um, So I have some, you know, we'll talk about some other like winter books or books that could work in winter as well. But that's really what I'm um, looking for. So I guess my first thing is like, do you when you're reading, do you notice that you read seasonally? Or are you kind of jumping around? Um, I'm usually more intentional when every month I make sure, of course, to read like heavy on the black authors, which I do all year anyway, but I feel like I skew towards like black history and nonfiction. But then I do the same for like Hispanic, um, Hispanic Heritage Month, um, Indigenous Peoples Month. I do LGBTQ. I, you know, make sure to intentionally read because I feel like I don't read a whole lot of LGBTQ um, representation. So I make sure to do that. So I feel like my themes are more like that versus seasonal. Uh, but then during October, I have to do my Halloween books, like vampires, witch rom-coms. I'm all about those in October. And then during like the Christmas season, the winter time, I definitely want like my cheesy winter romance d- during that time. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, that makes sense. And I love how intentional you are about like reading, you know, with the different months. And of course, you know, also it goes without saying, like, including those, including other cultures, ethnicities, viewpoints, life um, experiences throughout the entire year. Um, But I do think one of the good things about you know splitting that up and following it with the months is sometimes it one it makes it easier to find a lot of like booktubers or other instagrammers are giving tons of suggestions um 
for new books or new releases that are coming out with those um, matching genres or subgenres. Um, so I think it's, I think it's great. And I do typically, I think my two big ones are probably summer for summer. I'm looking for all of the, you know, pool, easy pool, plain type of books, mostly romances. Um, and then yeah, in, in October fallish, I'm looking for mostly this year I was heavy into the vampire mood. Like I wanted all the vampire stuff. I wanted like werewolves. Like I wanted like all of that, like Gothic type of fall vibes. Um, and so, you know, just being completely honest, moving into the holiday season and moving into winter, um, I really do want a version of Hallmark in a book. Like I said, add, add lots of spice, add, add a lot more color. Um, <laughs> and you know, <laughs> give me more than a kiss at the end and happily ever after, like, you know, give me a little bit more to the plot. Um, but I feel like, like I have a very hard time finding those types of books during the holiday season. I feel like um, with Christmas books, I feel like there aren't that many of them. There's during the summertime, there's a ton of like pool beach romance books. Um, it's nonstop. They come out all the time, but I'm wondering if Christmas is such a specific genre and I don't know if that many people are into it or if there's not a big, big attraction for it. Um, I was just at Target yesterday looking and there's like four on the shelf um, you know, one of them I'd heard of before, but I don't know. You're right. I, I'm wondering if there's just not a whole lot of them. Yeah, no, that's a good point. It might not be a market. Like, so summer, what? I mean, you could really start summer reading at the end of April, spring break-ish. Yes. Like, I think people are kind of like in that, okay, I'm ready for some summer books. Um, even like summer murder mystery and thriller and stuff like that. Like, I think people are really ready um, for that, like April. And that really goes all the way through almost to September. Like yeah. people are still reading. Um, and maybe we notice it more here being in Las Vegas, cause we're still a hundred degrees in September. So it's still summer for us. Um, but you know, that's what it seems like versus like maybe people are looking for a holiday slash winter read between, maybe thanksgiving and new year's maybe maybe strictly december 1 to december 31 um and then it's kind of like whatever else falls into this bucket so maybe you're right maybe it's not um a huge market for it um as as it is with um halloweeny you know spooky spooky season i feel like is like huge um and then like, it's whatever gets left over for the rest of the year. <laughs> then I'm wondering too, if like the summer reads, you can read them all year. It's not really entirely summer specific. It's just that you skew to it more towards the summertime. And then like horror and psychological thriller is a genre that you would read all year. It's just, mm. you gravitate towards them in, in October. So I'm wondering if it's just that, like that the Christmas ones are very specific. Like it's, they're green and they have Christmas lights on the cover and like it's winter and it, you know, like it's so specifically Christmas. Um, so maybe there's a little bit of that too. Yeah, no, you're right. That's true. Like, cause reading, um, Oh, what was the book that we, that I, that, well, I think we both read it. Oh, um, the weight of blood. Like mm -hmm. that to me was a really great summary read. Um, the Weight of Blood by Tiffany D. Jackson is really like a modern retelling of Harry. Takes a spin on it though, and it has a really um, big racial subplot to it. So for me, because it's happening at the end of the school year, and then if you've seen Carrie, you know it goes into prom season. And so for me, that was like a great summer um, type of book. And then I saw some people putting it on their, you know, fall spooky season reads and i was yes. like yeah well, like, you know i guess it goes with that too i read it in february for black history month because i read like my black history non-fictions and then i was like i need a actual fiction in here 
bring up a good point. And I really do think that that probably has a lot to do with it is that it's so specific versus some of these other ones you could definitely um, cross over. And some of my suggestions would definitely work in multiple um, seasons. So yeah, good point. Good point. Good point. So when you're looking um, for holiday reads, Christmas reads, and or winter reads, um, are you looking in a specific place? Are you going somewhere specific? Or is it just kind of like whatever you happen to see you put on your list? Um, I'm, I do actively look for a Christmas read. Um, I feel like it's kind of difficult to find them, but I'm like searching through Goodreads. I'm looking in the store. I'm actively looking on like, you know, on the bookstagram accounts that I follow, but I am intentionally looking for um, a holiday read. And I want like a, I want it to be, I do want like a green book with the Christmas lights on the cover and the woman, you know, moves back to the small town during Christmas time. Like I want a super cheesy, like holiday. So I'm looking for that. That's the only thing I have to actively look for it. To actively look. Yeah, no, I agree. Mm -hmm. Um, and again, knowing that this podcast episode was coming up, I've been paying like a lot closer of attention to, you know, some of the bookstagram accounts that I follow as well as some of the YouTubers that I follow, um, to see like what people are saying. And I think like, as of this date, you know, we're recording the first week of November. Um, the, I think I've only seen one, um, and it's still fairly early, but I think I've only seen one YouTuber talk about like um you know holiday christmas winter reads um i've seen others that have done like you know the end of the year tbrs and things like that and they may have had something sprinkled in there um but i i swear by like september 1 or like end of august people were like here's 30 books for your spooky season read and i haven't seen that so it has really been like a treasure hunt to find lists of books or even just some that are coming out to kind of come up with a winter tbr let's talk about maybe giving some recommendations for those of you that are looking for holiday reads we'll see between <laughs> both of us how many we come up with and again holiday or winter um i'm just gonna be very honest i have some just regular feel good reads that could that might not technically be winter setting or Christmas setting, but they're easy to read. They're fun. Um, and it might give you like that break. Um, you know, something if you've got like 20 minutes to sit down and read like that, you can just hop in and hop out of. So Britt, what's your first recommendation? My recommendation is the holiday swap by Maggie Knox. It is definitely one of like the feel good holiday rom-coms. It's about identical twins who swap lives for 12 days. One of them is on a baking reality show, and the other one owns um, a business in a small town. Of course, they start <laughs> they start to fall in love with people in their you know separate lives. It is just like it's perfect. There's snow, you know, small town. It's all the tropes, and I really love it. It was such a fun um, romance. I read it last winter. Um, and I just remember having the perfect holiday vibes for this. So I highly recommend The Holiday Swap by Maggie Knox. Now I need to ask, did mm -hmm. you read that or was it on audio? A physical read. Physical yes. read. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And you liked, you enjoyed it that way, physically yes. reading it. Yes. Okay. Um, follow up question. Spice level. Is it fade to black, closed door, zero spice, or is it like, whew, don't read this in front of parents because you might sit there and blush? I believe it was fade to black. It was okay. also last Christmas. So you've read a million books apologies, since Apologies. <laughs> yes. Apologies if I don't remember. I don't remember any spice in this book. It was very, I had really, really Hallmark vibes. Okay. Nothing wrong with that. I just like to, you know, and I know that there are some people, um, you know, there's some people who don't like that in their romances or, you know, are okay without it. So just so that they know um, going into it. Um, you know, what they're getting. So thank you. Okay. So my first one, and I just finished this one, and technically, again, it is not 
a winter, like a full winter book. I think you could read it probably in any season. However, um, there are two winter like seasons within the book and that's Indigo by Beverly Jenkins. And you guys, (gasps) one of my favorite romance reads this year. It was so good. Britt, you read it. Um, we follow two characters who, um, are working with the Underground Railroad. Um, we have Hester who has like a stop, like it, like her home, um, her cellar is used, um, you know, as a stop. And then we have Gallen who is also known as the Black Daniel. And he is, um, like a famous conductor, um, for the Underground Railroad. And so like we start the book. And it's kind of like fallish season and we kind of get into winter um, and then it goes through the year. And then like we end the book literally with one of the best Christmas scenes um, that I've ever read. And it was just the sweetest, the cutest romance. And I just, I loved it. And I physically read this one. So I, did you listen to the audio? I, I can't speak to what the audio is. No, I read it. I have read that one on Kindle. I didn't even peg that as Christmas. You're right. There were so many winter scenes in that book. If I can suggest any book, you guys, it's going to be Indigo. It's going to be Indigo. That That's like my top, like, just do yourself a favor. It's a historical romance. Um, it's just, it's just so well written. Five stars. Okay. So my next one is Long Live the Pumpkin Queen. Tim Burton's The Nightmare Before Christmas. Um, The writer was Shay Aronshaw, and it is a continuation of the movie. So there's always this back and forth argument, like, is Nightmare Before Christmas a Halloween movie or is it a Christmas movie? I don't know the answer, but I will watch that movie all the way from Halloween to Christmas. (laughs) So... And I was a huge fan as a kid. So I listened to this one on audio. I will start off by saying this is definitely a middle grade book. So it's great for all ages. But it was also so great as a fan of the series that it didn't it didn't skew so young that I didn't enjoy it. But it was exactly the same characters and it was a continuation on. So now that um, now that Sally and Jack are married. She is going to become the pumpkin uh, queen and she is definitely having a little issues with now, like um, she goes from being obscure, kind of like prisoner in her, you know, in the castle that she had before. And now she's really getting similar vibes and becoming the pumpkin queen where she's like, has to adhere to every single thing that the town needs from her. Um, So she's really having kind of an identity crisis within that. So she runs away one day and accidentally leaves the door open to one of the, um, one of the next towns that she finds and unknowingly unleashes like a beast on all of the towns. And she has to try to, I'm really trying not to give any spoilers away. (laughs) Um, but she really has to try to like save all of the towns, um, Halloween town, you know, there's Halloween town, Christmas town, Easter town, all the different towns. So she has to save all of them, um, by herself because something happens to all of the people in all of the towns. Um, and it was just so fun. Again, I listened to it on audio. So whoever was narrating Sissy Johnson, she sounds exactly like Sally from the original movies. And there was like melody in the background, like spooky music. Um, it was, it was perfection, whether you want to listen to it during the ho- you know Halloween season or the holiday season. I really enjoyed it. If you're a fan of Nightmare Before Christmas, you have to listen to this one. It was so good. So I'm going to tell myself here, I've never seen that whole movie which is like, blasphemous. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know, I know. I I agree. I don't know if it's Christmas or Halloween. I think it's both. You know, you could throw them in both. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I've never seen the whole movie. So my homework is to watch the movie so that I can listen to the book. Um, because yeah, when you were reading it, you were like so excited about it. And I had to confess like, I have no idea what you're talking about. I have no idea who these characters are. (laughs) I have 
<laughs> no, just no idea at all. So, it so yeah. fun. It was so fun. I just, you just feel like you're right back in the world. And, um, you know, listeners, you could probably imagine, like, I'm a millennial. So I was definitely in middle school when the first move, when, you know, A Nightmare Before Christmas came out. So it just like took me right back there. And I feel like that's what holiday books should do. Yeah. And I'll just take you to like a place that just feels good. So I really enjoyed that one. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. So my next one is going to be for a very specific reader. So if you like fantasy, and not only do you like fantasy, but if you don't mind a slow fantasy. Now, when I say that, I mean, like a lot of people like they get into a book and they get 50 pages in and they're like, oh, is this going to pick up? So for some books, yes. And some books just have a slower pace. They're full of detail. They're full of atmosphere. They're full of character building. And it's not necessarily bad, but it's just a slower pace. And so if you're a reader who likes fantasy and you don't mind slower pace, and I think you'll really like this one, Spinning Silver by Naomi Novik. Um, it is a rumple still skin, like retelling. It gives all of the cold winter vibes. We're following, um, our main character and, um, like her family, um, Miriam, her family, um, was money lenders and they give out money and her grandfather was really great at money lending. Um, but her dad is awful. Um, He's taken over the business and he's awful. He lends the money, but he's not great at collecting the money with interest back. And so it gets to a dire point and Miriam's like, you know what? I'm taking this into my own hands. We cannot live like this anymore. I'm collecting the money. And so she becomes so good at it that she gets this reputation for being able to spin silver, the silver that they're collecting into gold. Um, and so then that rumor or, you know, that saying that they, um, associate Miriam with catches the attention of the Fae people. And this is not a book where we fall in love with the Fae, where these are hot, you know, glistening, muscled, tattoo winged Fae people. These are true evil fey characters that you want to avoid and they're like on the outside of the town and the trees and it is dead winter during this entire book um so that's one set of characters that we're following and then there's another set where a girl is um you know in an arranged marriage um and she has like this special kind of ability um and you know it also deals around her in winter i'm trying to be vague so i don't give away any spoilers but Like I said, this book has some great winter scenes. Um, It has like ice castle type of stuff happening. It's very, very winter. Um, But I just, you know, I think it's only going to be for the right reader. Um, I physically read this one. Um, The chapters where I struggle with like 45 minute chapters. I read it on Kindle. So the chapters are like 45 minutes each. So maybe check this out from the library, maybe try and see if the audio is on Libby. Um, because maybe that'll be a better enjoyment way. I I didn't listen to it that way. So I can't speak to it. But if you're really looking for something atmospheric, that is really going to give you that winter scene, I really suggest this book. We talked a little bit about Halloween. So I do want to recommend this one for like fall time. And it is My Roommate is a Vampire by Jenna Levine. And I really love this one. I laughed out loud throughout this entire thing. It is a rom-com and it's a debut for this author. Um, But Cassie is the main character and um, she's an artist, kind of just like a starving artist that lives in Chicago. And she is looking for a roommate, but finds on Craigslist um, that someone listed their rent for just like $250. And Yes, it de- yes, that's exactly right. Yeah. Red flag. Um, but she is a starving artist and uh she goes to check out this this guy's place. His name is Frederick. Um and you know, as the title says, my roommate is a vampire. As time goes on, there's little glimpses and uh you know, several red flags that she should have seen way earlier. Um 
but it turns out that he is a vampire and it's just, it's so funny. It's so quippy. Um, He wanted to get a roommate so that he could kind of like learn how to be around humans and live in the current time. Um, Mm -hmm. So it's just that, adds to a lot of the comedy in this one. And I just had so much fun reading it. I inhaled it. I feel like I read it with just in a couple days. Um, and I fi- I did a physical read for this one, but I really enjoyed it. I highly recommend for all fall. It definitely gave me like fall vibes. What What is the spice level like? Like, what are we? Oh, spice level? Yeah, we got a little bit of spice. It was not closed okay. door. It was like a, like okay. a two peppers out of four. Okay. Okay, Mm -hmm. interesting. Not a whole lot throughout, Mm -hmm. like, one scene. I think another really good one. Now, I'm bringing this one, again, with another, like, disclaimer. I did not love this book. However, and I don't know if this is on your list, Brittany. However, you liked it. Two Parts Sugar, One Part Murder by Valerie Burns. And so I'm struggling with this whole like cozy concept, like I wanted more out of this book. Um, But if you're looking for something that's like easy, you know, it's a, it's like a murder mystery. Um, It's happening in the winter in Michigan. So I feel like this is like a great, um, you know, a a great like vibey type of book, low stakes. There's no like murder too gruesome or anything that's happening on the page. Mm -hmm. But I struggle with like this cozy concept, I think, because I wanted more murder on the page. (laughs) I wanted more, you know, guts and, you know, gore and like fights and scenes. Oh my gosh. This is why I lean more to like fantasy type of stuff because I get that. Um, So it didn't have like the grotesqueness that I wanted. (laughs) However, (laughs) Brittany ate it up. And I've seen other people who have really, really liked this book. So I wanted to bring it. um, I gave it three stars, which to me, a three star isn't bad. It just means it was okay. Um, And so I gave it a three star, but I think some people might really um, enjoy it. And it's a short book. I want to say it was, it was definitely under 300 pages. I want to say it was like two, let me see, it was 266 pages. I read it. So it made it like super easy to get through. So that might be another good one for someone out there. That's so funny. It wasn't gory enough for you. (laughs) Okay. I do have one in that vein. It is below zero. It's a novella by Allie Hazelwood. Mm -hmm. So Mm. I usually read novellas in between. um, Sometimes I'll do a heavy read. And I feel like this is one of the ones like I did back to back uh, nonfictions and, uh, you know, like probably probably like back to back like black nonfictions or something. Um, So they were a little bit heavier. um, And I really like a nice little tiny romance novella to just like bring me out of it. And Allie Hazelwood has all of her um, stories that take place in the STEM world. So her main characters were were in the terrain of um, the Arctic. They are scientists and they were doing um, some, some work for NASA. So the main character, Hannah, um, is doing research and somehow she gets stuck out in the terrain of the Arctic and, um, the main male character has to come in to save her. Allie Hazelwood is, she's rinse and repeat with her, um, the premise of her book, but I really enjoyed it. He, he did a whole lot to save this girl out in the snow. <laughs> Aww, that's sweet. Yeah, yeah. She is definitely rinse and repeat. However, when you're looking for something quick, mm-hmm. something, like you said, like a palate cleanser, like I'm in a bunch of like heavy books and I need just something to like lift my spirits. Like, I feel like those rinse and repeats are good. You know, there's going to be a happily ever after, yes. you know, there's going to be some steam. You you kind of know. So either A, it's good to listen to like when you're working, um, whether you're cooking or, you know, you're doing, you know, you, you're still clocked in and you're just, you know, trying to get some background noise because I feel like you don't have to pay that close of attention because mm-hmm. we kind of know what's, you know, how this is going to play out. Um, and it's, sometimes it's just really comfortable when you're in a rut of like a reading like rut. Um, then you, you know, like, 
this is something that, you know, that you already kind of know what to expect. If you've liked Ali Hazelwood in the past, and you're probably going to like this. So tell me, what are some books that you are looking forward to reading? I am looking forward to reading Wreck the Halls by Tessa Bailey. Mm. Is this a novella? That one is not a novella. It's not. Okay. Uh, um, um, We've talked about this. Tessa Bailey has had like multiple books this year and I just, I'm not sure how I feel about it, but we'll save that for another episode. Yes, yes, yes. It's a holiday rom-com. I, um, and for me, I'm very light about the, like, I don't like reading the summaries a whole lot because I don't really like spoilers. Two former rock star children uh, team up to get their estranged parents to play together. So I do it for a holiday concert. So I'm, I feel like I hope it's, I hope it's everything that I'm looking for. The Christmas Appeal by Janice Hallett. Mm. And I already read her other book, um, The Appeal. It was really strangely written. So her writing format um, was fun, although it was very, you have to be, like prepared to do this and okay with it. Um, But it was written in all email and text correspondence. So the premise of the book is that you are um, reading from the point of the view of the FBI agent and they received a file of uh, email transcriptions between the suspects. And you're just, you're only reading email correspondence throughout the entire book to try to solve what the mystery is. So I read the appeal already. And now this one is um, the Christmas appeal. So it's a holiday version with those same characters. Apparently there's a new mystery and a new murder that happens and we have to solve it all over again. Um, It takes place in London with uh, like a local theater group and Mm you're just reading their back and forth emails um, throughout the book to try to solve the mystery. So I did not solve the mystery through the first one at all. I wasn't even (laughs) close. (laughs) I had sticky notes and highlighters and I'm taking notes and write, you know, like writing in the margins. Um, I wasn't even close on the first one, but I am excited because this one is, (laughs) is a holiday. I had a fun time. It was not a quick read for all of those reasons. Like between the formatting, Um, trying to figure things out. I felt like for me, I definitely need to take notes to figure out where we were with everything because you're not reading from any person's point of view. Um, Mm -hmm. So her format of the books, I feel like are always like this. Um, So they're not quick and easy reads, but they're super fun for me. Well, one that I'm looking forward to reading, and this is going to be, this is out of my comfort zone. Okay, so one of my like bookish icks is dating like your sister's ex, your brother's ex. Like that's one of my bookish icks. And I've read a few and they, they, they're they okay. I just kind of have to get past it. This is one of those. Um, but it is a specific, you guys, I need you to go look at this cover. It's called You Make It Feel Like Christmas by Tony Shiloh. Um, it's got the blue, cute little blue background, a huge Christmas tree, two black characters on the front of it. Like we don't see stuff like this, this often. So I really, really want to read this book. I want to be supportive. I want to give it a try. Um, and it, it's a newly published book too, which I think is, you know, is great. We were talking about, we don't see a lot of that, um, during this season. So the fact that it's a new book as well, it's got three Point eight two on Goodreads, just under 300 reviews um, at the time of this recording. So I'm hoping I'll be able to get past it. But Star goes home um, for the holidays and she's jobless, single, and not prepared to be dragged to her sister's wedding um, to witness her sister's marriage to her ex-boyfriend on Christmas Eve. Oh my gosh. Drama mess. Again, I don't typically do like the I'm dating, like my sister's dating my ex-boyfriend type of thing. Like I personally, me and my, like 
my sister would never because she would never longer she would be unalived because there's just no <laughs> like like that's not something we're <laughs> we're, we're going to do it just not in this household um and i would never you know i could never do something like that to her so i just think like i don't know why this bothers me so much but you know let's give it a try let's see um and so yeah so i think like the love interest is her is his her brother's best friend or it, it's a best friend is the love interest that comes into play. Um, so I'm just really, you know, it, it, again, it's giving the Hallmark vibes, the cozy vibes. It's got two black main characters. It is set like during Christmas. So I'm hoping um, that this will be a, a win for me again, at least a three star. I'll take a three star. I'm hoping it'll be higher than that. And it's short. It's 208 pages. So it should be really quick to get through. Um, so yeah, so that was You Make It Feel Like Christmas by Tony Shiloh. I saw that cover at Target yesterday and I was like, what is this? I need to have it. I barely even read the back of the cover and I was like, added. <laughs> added. <laughs> the last one that I have that's holiday related on my TBR for this year is Love Light Farms. It's got a very, you know, like memorable cover. Um... And I think there's like other books like that follow with, with similar covers. Yes. You know what? Last year, I honestly tried to listen to it on audio and I had a, um, a problem with the narrator. Like I, I couldn't get past the narration, uh, mm. but I'm going to try again this year with the physical copy. Um, and it's two best friends. Um, they fake date to reach their holiday happily ever after. It looks like there's a, uh, a tree farm, best friends, fake dating trope, all of these things. I think I'm, I'm like ultimately sold with just those handful of things. I didn't realize that this was also like a self-published um, author. Oh, an indie Or author. independent. Okay. Yes. Nice. So I really want to support now that I found Who's that. Who's the author? The author is B.K. Borison. Let me know how that one is. I've seen it. Um, it sounds very much, a lot of these sound like a Hallmark movie, of course. But this one sounds um, like there's a specific Hallmark movie that I'm thinking of and I can't remember. There um, are so many Hallmark movies where there's a tree farm. A tree someone farm. takes over the tree farm. Someone moves home to save the tree farm that's going to yeah. be bought out or is going out of business. I'm all about those. Okay. Well, my um, last one here is, so I have seen the name, the author, A.E. Valdez all over TikTok, book talk specifically this year. Um, and I have yet to pick up a book. This book is currently on Kindle Unlimited, so um, I definitely am going to be downloading this like within the next couple of days. It's called Snow King Catches His Snowflake um, by A.E. Valdez. Again, it's got a very cute cover. Um, you know, it's like the sunset in like the forest with snowed trees and a girl in like a jacket. She's like reaching out to touch a snowflake. Um, it looks like, again, you know, I'm with Brittany. I try not to read too much. I feel like some of the synopsises give way too much away, but um, she's faced with a reality that she was the better half. She ends up um, ending a three-year, you know, relationship um, with a boyfriend that um, has cheated. And, you know, it, it's, it appears to be like this is her journey um, to happiness, um, this is her journey to a love story to find someone better. Um, you know, they get into a little incident that brings them together. Um, and again, I'm being very general because I don't want to read too much of the synopsis um, to spoil it for myself. So that's pretty much the premise of what I've what I've gotten from it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just go out on a limb and get this and read it knowing just that information. Because again, the girls on Book Talk have talked A.E. Valdez up so much. Right now, out of like 1,300 ratings, this book is sitting at a 4.62 on Goodreads, which is really, really good. Uh, it's another indie author. 
Um, it's like 230 pages. So um, I'm willing, you know, I really want to get in and I want to try, especially because she's been a couple of her other books have been on my list this year and I haven't had an opportunity to get to them. So I'm really excited to try out this Christmas book. And I think it came out last year. Yeah, it came out last year. So um, it's been out for a little while. It's had time. Um, and for it to have such good ratings, I'm excited to to pick it up. Yes. I've yeah. heard of that one before too. And you're you're 100 percent right. It's been all over like book talk, bookstagram. I've seen it a whole lot and it's on my TBR as well. I lied. I have another one. So this one, I actually have more, but, um, you know, we're getting to our mark here, our time on the episode. So I have said this time and time again, I love Beverly Jenkins. Great historical romance author. Um, this book, however, I, is more modern, uh, contemporary. I do not believe this is a historical romance. And it's also book 11 in her Blessing series. From the research that I've done, I should be able to jump into this book without reading the other ones. Um, but it is called A Christmas to Remember by Beverly Jenkins. Um, and honestly, I don't care who it's about, what it's about, because it's Beverly Jenkins and it's Christmas. So I'm going to <laughs> I'm going to read it. Um, but the little quick synopsis says, ever since Bernice Brown bought the town of Henry Adams, her relationship with diner o- owner Malachi Mal July has had its share of ups and downs. But now they're finally ready to say I do. From what I've seen, hopefully some of these people online are not reading, leading me wrong, that I should be able to jump into this um, without reading all other 10 books first. Um, (laughs) we'll see. (laughs) Hopefully that's the case. I don't think I would mind reading them, but there's no way I could read all of them by the holidays, but I'm just Mm -hmm. excited that it's a holiday book from, um, you know, Miss Jenkins. So. Oh my um, gosh. I had not heard of that one before. I'm definitely adding that to my TBR. I love Beverly Jenkins and. I had no clue that she had a Christmas book. So I also hope that we don't have to read all 10 of them. And it just released. Like it came out, oh, I want to say last month. Um, so October 24th. Yeah, it came out last month. One of the early art, one of the people who got the early art said she requested it, not realizing that it was number 11 and that there are previous books with lots of drama. Um, but she got some recaps in the book and she's sure, um, or it worked for her not having read them in order. There are lots of other holiday and, um, winter books. The day that this episode airs, please make sure you come over to my Instagram, um, books with J Braggs, J A Y B R A G G S. Make sure you come over there. Um, because I'll have list, um, like a cute little caption of additional books. We cannot cover all of them, um, in this episode, but we'll give a couple of additional book recs, um, as well as I'll be asking you guys for your book recs and sharing those on my stories. So please make sure you come on over and check that out. But Brittany, we're going to get into our little quick rapid fire, um, section here. Are you ready? I'm ready. All right. First up, what is your perfect reading setup? Winter reading reading setup specifically. Winter reading setup. Um, On the couch with a blanket. Um, It is cold in the house. Like I want to be with a hoodie on. It's almost like 68 degrees inside. Um, My dad would be like dying to hear me say that right now. (laughs) And then I want to have the like TV on with the like YouTube fireplace Mm-hmm. like the little fake fireplace oh there's a cute one on disney the frozen uh there's a like a scenescape with the fireplace from frozen yeah. on disney plus yes on disney plus yeah and it just Ooh. runs for like three hours in the background and like olaf runs in and he runs out oh my gosh i gotta admit I oh really thanks like for one. sharing i'm gonna have to look at that i love that mm-hmm. yeah 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 because sometimes youtube and then it'll like all of a sudden go to an ad and i'm like no this isn't yeah, I I tried that the other day. Yes, because I only really do that during during fall and Christmas. Um, mm-hmm. And I forgot about the ads. I was trying to do like a fall, you know, scape in the mm-hmm. background. And I really I was like, Oh, I forgot about the ads. I'm out. 
So what would make the perfect bookish gift? Ah, uh, okay. I, there's two gifts that I have really been liking and I, it's just because I've been seeing them on social medias and stuff. I'm loving the like blind date with the books. Like if mm. someone gifted me like book bestie, if it comes from you and it's wrapped up in the paper <laughs> and you just wrote like, yes. And you just wrote like, you know, a handful of things on it. I know that I'm going to like it because it came from you and you barely gave me anything. Like it just so exciting to me. I love that as a gift. Um, and then I've been liking the, the book baskets too. Like if it's a theme, so you give a book. And then in the basket, you give stuff that is in the theme of the book. So like sometimes there's a blanket with it, but then there's snacks that correlate to what the theme of the book is and like that type of stuff. Um, so I've been liking that too. But the blind date book thing is like, I don't know. I've been loving that That's so much. It. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's your thing. Oh, love it. Love it. Love it. Okay. Favorite winter reading snack. I like beverages. I'm all about the hot beverages. Anything hot that's what I want. So I feel like it would be more of just like a hot beverage versus a snack. So coffee, mm. tea, hot water with lemon, anything hot, I will take it. I have a cold right now. I'll do like hot Theraflu in a cup and sip it like it's the best thing I've ever tasted. Anything <laughs> hot in a mug. <laughs> okay. Okay. So no food, just the drink, the hot drink. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Last one. Let's say I wanted to go on a bookish adventure or like a book reading day um, for winter, but it was in the woods. Are you in or are you out? Can I stay inside? Guys, if you could see her face right now. <laughs> If you, we're just going to go, we've got all of the wonderful snacks. We've got all of the wonderful beverages. We've got the fire going, the blanket, but we're going to be in the woods for 24 hours. Cell service is questionable. Are you in or are you out? Um, I would like to stay inside the entire time. And <laughs> can I see the cabin before we go? <laughs> Can you see the cabin before we, I'm not going to book a retreat for us to be in like a murderous cabin. Like this isn't Halloween theme. This is Christmas theme. Okay. Um, I think mostly I'm in, I've also seen cabins go so wrong. Um, <laughs> listeners, I'm from the Midwest. <laughs> At least I'm from Chicago. So that every time we went out to a cabin, it was always like icky. Um, so mostly I'm in for this, JJ. I trust you. I trust you. Yes, I'm in. <laughs> okay. That was just fun. I don't know. I was just curious. I was, you know, like, huh, I wonder if Brittany would ever go. Like, so here, Mount Charleston. Like, hey, Britt, let's head up to Mount Charleston for the weekend. Like, we're, like, no work, nothing. We are going to bring a bunch of books and we're going to sit and read and just Their enjoy. cabins are weird. Sorry, Mount Charleston, no shade. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Well, that's going to be it for this one. Um, Brittany, thank you so much for joining and jumping on the podcast. I had a really great time. We can talk books all day, all the time. If any of our listeners want to continue to talk books with you, where is the best place to reach you? Oh, you can find me on Instagram at Brit. B R I T T dot Kirkland, K I R K L A N D. That's my Instagram. And uh, I have, you know, a link in the bio for every single place that you can find me online. Thank you guys so much for listening, and we will talk to you next time. Bye. Hey there, one last thing before you leave. Are you looking for a group to read and chat about books with? I'd love to have you join us for our next buddy read of The Personal Librarian. We'll be having a virtual meetup to discuss this book on Sunday, January 14th. Trust me, it's always a good time and we'd love to have you join. All of the details can be found in the show note below on how you can join us for this buddy read over on the Geneva app. As a reminder, all books mentioned in this episode can also be found in the show note. Thanks so much for joining us and wishing you a wonderful reading adventure until we meet again. Chat soon.